les modifications de temps. Okay, so let's start now. Uh, so I wanted to first show you this uh, simple example because if we've got this sentence, elle te répond, je suis d'accord. Okay, so répondre is to answer, te, it's for you, so she answers to you. Je suis d'accord, okay, so in French this je suis d'accord is I do agree. Uh, of course, in that situation, if we want to transpose this first structure at this discours indirect, it's quite simple because you just need to put back all your elements so elle te répond, it doesn't change, okay. Que, that, remember, that's the key thing of this discours indirect, que, that, but then in that case, uh, needs to go away because we've got a vowel after. So, quel, so je will have to be transposed to elle, of course, because the subject here is elle. Et d'accord, of course, the verb is changing as well, okay? But it's actually quite simple in that case because we've got, if you look carefully, in the first structure here, it's the present form, and here, it's the present form. So, I mean, no big changes, and that's the, that's the main thing. So, in that case, you don't really need to worry. You put back all your elements, you just modify them if necessary, and that's it. You've got your discours indirect structure, okay? If you've got the same thing, you know, with here, the future. Elle te répondra, je suis d'accord. So, here it's the future, it's répondre to answer, but at the future simple form. And in the uh, second part here, it's the present form. And let's have a look. And you'll see that it's not really difficult because it doesn't change that much. Elle te répondra, so we put back these elements here. Quel, okay, as we had previously, because it doesn't change here, it will be that, okay, que, but then you take the e away. Of course, you will have to modify this je and put it in here with l, et, d'accord. The verb, if you look carefully, will stay at the present form. Doesn't need to change here. Even if we've got the future here, it will stay at the present form in the second part here. Okay, so the thing is that. for the present and the future. So, if the verb that introduces this structure, this structure indirect, discours indirect, is at the present form or the future form, then the good news is that you won't have to modify anything after it. Okay? So, that's the rule. That's the rule. If the verb that introduces this structure is at the present form or the future form, then you don't modify the verb after, which is a quite good news. But then, of course, it's French language. And we've got to think that if we've got... So it will be the, the it's, it's the common structure that we will have. So verb introducteur, and then after that we've got the... The, the, the phrase, the sentence, okay? If you've got this first part here at the passé, okay? So it's the past here. Passé means past. And when I write past, well, it, basically it could be imparfait, passé composé, uh, passé simple. All the past tenses that we saw so far, well, if this first verb is at the past, then the rest of the sentence so, or the rest of the structure here will have to be modified if you want to put that at the discours indirect. And that's what we'll see in this video. Okay? So the first example is if we've got this verb introducteur at the past form, okay, and for all the examples I will put this uh, first uh, part at the um, passé composé, okay, so it will be easier that way, okay, so if we get the second part here at the présent, well, this part will have to change, and, well, the verb introducteur will stay the same, but it will 
I mean, this present form will be at the imparfait. Okay, so let's have a look how it will go. So, as I said, first verb, I did put that at the passé composé form and it will be always the same for all the examples. So, I will keep the same sentence and I will keep the same verb and it will be at the passé composé. Elle t'a répondu. Je suis d'accord. So we've got exactly the same sentence as we had previously when we had the present present or then future present. In that case, so as we saw, we've got passé composé and then present form. And if you remember what I just told you previously, then the rule goes like that. This first part doesn't change. It is still at the passé composé form. But the second part here, so your present form will be changed and you will have to put the verb, so it's the verb to be, uh, it's être, you will have to put it at the imparfait form. That's the rule, okay? Don't need to think why, how, etc. No, just put it at the imparfait, okay? And you get the sentence, elle t'a répondu qu'elle était d'accord. All right? So this is the way that you should uh, follow if you want to make this discours indirect. And in the first part you've got, well, the past. And in the second part you've got the present form. Okay? So let's see now, how do we do if we've got, well, still the same thing, so the passé. And we've got, in the second part, le passé composé. Well, of course, the first part will stay the same, as we saw. But then, this passé composé form will become plus que parfait. And let's have a look. Elle t'a répondu. J'ai été d'accord. Okay. And so, j'ai été. This is the passé composé. J'ai été d'accord. So that's the thing that we'll have to change and we'll have to modify it and put it at the... Like here. Elle avait été We'll put that at the plus que parfait. So we get, elle t'a répondu qu'elle avait été d'accord. All right, so remember, the first part doesn't change. Elle t'a répondu. Sorry, don't need to modify it. You don't need to, to change it. But then the second part, so, a été here, passé composé, will become avait été here. So it's the plus que parfait. Okay, so let's see now another possibility. If we've got, so we still the passé form in the first part, and then if we've got this futur simple form in the second part, then this futur simple will change and it will become futur du passé. So it's a strange thing <laughs> because we tend to call that, you know, futur du passé, but well, technically it's conditionnel présent. All right, so that's the way you will have to maybe remember it. Oops, the accent was in the wrong direction. It should be like that, okay? But it, it, anyway, it's the conditionnel présent form that you will have to put here. So let's have a look now. Elle t'a répondu, je serai d'accord, okay? So we do agree that, well, it's still the same here, passé composé. And in the second part here, je serai. So it's still the verb to be, but then remember, it's the futur for, okay, this future simple. Je serai d'accord. And so it will become, elle t'a répondu qu'elle serait d'accord. Okay, they look quite similar, but keep in mind that this form here is the conditionnel present form. Okay, elle t'a répondu qu'elle serait d'accord. And so let's see now if we've got... So still in the first part, the past, because that will be the, the whole thing of the, this video. And we've got this future antérieur in the second part. And this future antérieur will become what we call, and it's still the same thing, quite interesting, future antérieur du passé, but then technically it's the conditionnel passé. Okay? Elle t'a répondu, j'aurais été d'accord. Okay, so here, what do we have? First, as usual, we've got this passé composé. J'aurais été, d'accord? Here we've got this future antérieur form. And it will become, elle t'a répondu qu'elle 
aurait été d'accord. So still, the same thing, keep in mind that it looks a little bit like this form, but still, it is quite different because it's what we call conditionnel passé. Okay? So now, if we've got the futur proche in the second part, this futur proche will become aller, and it should be at the imparfait form plus l'infinitif. And so, elle t'a répondu, je vais être d'accord. So keep in mind that when we talk about this future proche, well, it's aller anyway, uh, but in that case, it's at the present form. Je vais, I am going to be, okay, je vais être, we want to make the liaison, je vais être. So I am going to be, uh, and in that case, well, as I said, you know, it's the present form. If you want to transpose that at the discours indirect, so as we saw, this first part doesn't change, but this second part here, so elle allait être d'accord, that's the only thing that will change. So you will have to put your verb aller here, and it will be at the imparfait. Elle allait être d'accord. Elle t'a répondu qu'elle allait être d'accord. And last but not least, if you've got in your second part the passé récent, so this recent past, then it will be still the same structure, the same way to construct it. So normally, normally this passé récent is constructed like that, venir de, but then it's at the present. And in that case, it will be modified like we had previously for this near future, le futur proche. It should be at the imparfait form. Okay, so let's have a look. Elle t'a répondu, je viens d'être d'accord. Okay, so this is what we call le passé récent. So it's the verb venir, and here it's the present form. Okay, and you will have to modify it and to put it at the imparfait form here. Elle t'a répondu qu'elle venait d'être d'accord. Okay, so the only thing that you will have to modify it's this verb here, venir. So when you get this passé récent, it's at the present form. It will be here at the, at the imparfait form. Okay? Elle t'a répondu qu'elle venait d'être d'accord. So I know it may sound strange and difficult, but then keep in mind that, well, I did this thing. If you put it at the present and the future, so remember it doesn't change at all, okay? But then if you want to have this first verb at the past form, so that's when it will become tricky. So keep in mind that if you've got this structure, so first verb at the passé form and then the second verb, it is at the present form, okay? So when you will modify this structure and you will put this discours indirect. So remember, présent, as we saw, will become imparfait. Okay? Then, if you've got passé composé, so in the s still in the second part of the structure, it will become plus que parfait. Okay? If you've got the futur simple, so as the second structure, it will become what we saw, futur du passé. If you've got futur antérieur, so in the second part of this structure, it will become futur antérieur du passé. If you've got futur proche, it will become, well, like le futur proche, but then the only thing that you've got to modify is aller. You should put this verb at the imparfait, and then the rest of the structure. If you've got the passé récent, then the only thing like we had for the future proche, the only thing you will have to modify is the verb venir, and you should put that at the imparfait form. Then don't forget the, prepo the preposition de and your infinitive after. Okay?